bless you. As believers, we are always looking for the possibilities of translating our Christian philosophies, the revelatory truths that is preached from the podium to give us an added advantage spiritually and also accelerate our life to success here on earth. I believe that the reason why we go to church is not just to participate in, in the rituals, but we want to find out divine truth, unique strategies, uh, spiritual principles that will harness us with what it takes to live beyond our human liabilities and weaknesses and struggles. We want to be able to overpower, overcome the enemy when we do warfare. That is why we pray. We don't just want to engage in the prayer ritual without getting the results. The reason why we pray, the reason why we go to church, the reason why we do all this praise and worship is because we have the belief that the, what God has promised in his word will become a reality for us if we follow after the pattern of truth the revelatory concepts and strategies that has been laid out in the word of God. Even as we search the scripture to excavate the truth, to dig out those treasures that will enrich our life with uh, the incredible promises of God. But interestingly, a lot of believers, although we have such a form of godliness, we have not been able to come to the reality of the truth. We have not experienced many of the things of God. And because many people have gone through such an incessant disappointment, they have gone through so much struggle, they have just embraced the mediocrity of religion, going through the exercise of religious drama and the rituals. They have no expectation for the supernatural. They have procrastinated their promises to a future event that they label a breakthrough. So we are always waiting for a breakthrough. And so we pray, we do warfare, but the level to which God wants us to experience his word, we have not come into the manifestation of it. And I believe that we need to confront this anomaly. We need to look at it in the face and, and challenge it. But for us to do that, we must be armed with the right truth. We need to diagnose our state and find out why are we not getting the result? Why is it that we have put so much in, dedicated our time, invested our resources, we have been faithful in our church going, but we don't see the dividend of the supernatural, the, the, the level of promise for every believer. Look at what the Bible is saying. The Bible says, that if you believe, you shall cast out devil. This belongs to everybody. You shall, even if you drink the dead later, it shall not harm you. Think about that. You shall raise the dead. All these are promises that God has allocated for believers. And how many of the church goers who are believers are already experiencing that? And I believe that we need to be able to really find out why are we believers and not getting the result because the authentic proof that you are a believer is not the church you go to or you labeling yourself as a born again christian what makes you a believer is evidence on the fruit on the demonstration on you casting that devil raising the dead even if you drink deadly things shall not harm you. Even if you take up serpents. You see what I'm talking about? All those things are things that authenticate our faith. It's not just arming yourself with theological concepts and ex excelling your exemplary drama and you going to church and bragging about the edifice of the church and architectural excellence. No, 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 no. We want to ask you, what can we say about your belief, that is evidence in your work. What can we do? So today, I really want us to not just talk about it, but let's awaken ourselves to the remedy, to examine, to find out why are we not getting the results. So I want to use a scripture because I really believe that when we find out the cause of our failure to manifest the expectation of our faith or our belief, then we will be able to rightly concord the, the recipe necessary to be able to step into manifestation of what God has ordained for us. 
we will be able to know what to do. Because if you don't know what to do, if you don't have the right revelatory truth, then you are still going to repeat what you are doing, a form of godliness, but being void of the power of God. Today, I want us to talk about what can we do to be able to step into the promises of God, cast out devils, raise the dead, demonstrate the power of God, exercise dominion wherever you are, move in the dimension of the miraculous, experience the, the power of the ages to come, to be able to walk in the supernatural gifts of God, to experience an intimate relationship with God beyond your wildest dream. If that is what, is what you really, really desire, and it's, you want much more than just going to church, then listen now, because we are about to step into a dimension that will literally awaken you to experience what God has ordained for. That before I get into the word, I want you to take a moment and just watch this advertisement and what we're doing in the ministry. I'll come right back and we'll get into God's word. Stay with me because you're about to receive truth that will change your life for the better. I'll be right back. If you really desire more out of your Christian life than just going to church and participating in your religious activities or rituals, you really want an encounter with God, an experiential knowledge of the truth, I really want to help you. I want you to join me in Triumphant Life Global Network because I want to mentor you by teaching you not just spiritual information, but practical pragmatic uh, strategies and system extracted from the truth of the living word of God and also be able to show you what it's going to take to take your talents and turn it into income in the marketplace. That means I'll teach you to be an entrepreneur, to be able to use what God has given to you and transform it into a, an income generating venture in the marketplace. Not only that, there's so much that I want to offer you when you become a global member of Triumphant Life Ministry. You're going to have an e-pastor. You're going to have a personal prophet who's going to give you a prophetic report every month. You're going to have a personal intercessor who's going to cover your life as you begin to uh, begin to communicate with you. You're going to give him your prayer request. He's going to continue to cover you consistently every month. And not only that, we're going to have conferences, Zoom meetings, group uh, interaction on Facebook. There's so much more that you are going to experience as a global member. Because of technology, there is no limit to the resources that you are going to have access to, not only on our website, but on our social media networks. I'm extending an invitation for you to take your life to the next level not only spiritual growth, but exponential sources in entrepreneurship and the ability to, to uh, cap, uh, utilize everything that you have in life and be successful in every areas of life. And I also want to, to get you started. I want to offer you a, a free webinar, a 10-week webinar on how to be able to get rich God's way, how to excavate the treasures of God in your life. And at the moment you sign up, you're going to have access to this webinars. You're going to begin to uh, learn what it's going to take to discover the treasures of God in you, the hidden uh, wealth, the opportunities, how to translate that into income within 10 weeks. Join me and your life will not be the same again. This is Randolph Monte. 
your pastor. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you for seeing me. I really believe this is a momentous time to, to break you out of the cycle of religion into a tangent in the direction of divinity where you are literally empowering your humanity to experience the supernatural. I really believe that God has an incredible work for you to do, to experience him, to have an intimate relationship with him, to, to step into the place of dominion where you rule, you govern, in your domain here and there to experience such supernatural lifestyle that people will begin to wonder who what is happening to you that is what i'm talking about so before before we get into it i want to use a scripture as a foundation to to excavate this treasure of truth that will enrich you in every areas of your life in colossians chapter 2 verse 6 colossians chapter 2 verse 6 the Bible says, therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, walk ye in him. As de therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, walk ye in him. Now, when you read this text, it looks a little bit abstract. But as we begin to get deep into it and, and, and to meditate on it, induce and deduce concepts from the text our eyes will be enlightened by the power of the holy ghost so let's look at the text as he the, as therefore you have received ye him as you received the lord jesus christ walk ye in him and so the reason why we receive the lord jesus christ is because he wants you to walk in him the life of your faith started not on receiving the theology it is not you experiencing a psychological awakening it is not a humanistic ideology you are not supposed to be impressed by good information because what made you a believer is not the information you receive but the person you accepted into your heart and it's Christ Jesus the Lord he says, as therefore, therefore, as ye have received him, receive him, walk in him. Now, you can receive a theology about him. You can receive revelatory truths about him. You can receive concepts about him, uh, which is insightful, mesmerizing, is going to move you into an emotional frenzy. You, are, you, uh, you get excited about cliches that is preached and, and amplified from our pulpit. But that is not going to empower you to walk in him. And so we have to be very careful. It is the tendency for our teachers or preachers to incite us, mesmerize us with their philosophies and concepts, trying to impress us. Or to literally convince us of the truth has done much more harm to believers than anything else because what you receive will determine how you are going to live. That's why when Paul came to the Corinthians, was writing to the Corinthians, he says, that When I come to you, I've made up my mind that I'm not going to impress you with the wisdom of men. But I will demonstrate the spirit. I will reveal. I will prove. I will show you the Holy Spirit. I will present him as an evidence before you. I will demonstrate the spirit. That your faith will not rest in the wisdom of men. But in the power of God. And so from what Paul is saying. Whatever you speak. You are literally establishing two kinds of faith. Faith in philosophy oratory eloquence and and concepts of men or you are establishing the people in the faith of the holy spirit in the faith of the person and so therefore what you listen determines how you are going to walk 
That's why Jesus warned the disciples, be careful of what you hear. Because whether you like it or not, your walk is governed by what you have heard. What entered your heart or days literally orders your steps. You have to be very careful. Faith comes by hearing and fear also comes by hearing. Faith will elevate you to the place of divinity and fear will cripple you and literally be shackled with the fear of the darkness. And so we have to come to this understanding. The Bible declares that as ye have received the Lord Jesus, walk ye in him. So you don't receive him once and then continue to find out dogma from the church, denominational structures and, and philosophies of men, and you want to now apply those principles. You want to obey the concept. You want to now find out the step one, step two of what people are teaching. You are reading it from books. You are hearing it from preaching. All those things will impress you and mesmerize you with the philosophies of men, the transcendental wisdom will blow your mind. The cliches will incite you. You will be moved emotionally into a frenzy. At, but at the end of the day, you will never be able to walk. So look at the text again. As we have received him, walk ye in him. See, the reason why the Lord, God wants you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ is because he wanted you to walk in him. You received him not just to be a churchgoer. You received him not just to look good religiously. You received him because he wants you to walk exactly like him. And you have to understand, you can't receive him, uh, you can't walk in him until you have received him. And when you receive him, you don't receive him as a moment event. You receive him to be an intimate walk, relationship with him. You received him because there are things that God Almighty wants you to walk in. And if you don't have Christ, with you, in you, in him, you are never going to be able to walk into that. So the promises of God for your life is based on the walk of Jesus Christ. God gives you promises knowing that you cannot fulfill it by your own walk, literally religiously obeying concepts of piety and thinking that you can experience that dimension of lifestyle. That is why a lot of believers are trying so hard to get to manifest the promises of God and they will never be able to do it because what God wants you to do, the Father has promised you, is for those who walk in Christ. For the promises of God in Christ are yea and amen. It is affirmed, it is established when you walk in Christ. And you cannot walk in Christ until you have accepted Christ. And so you receive the Lord Jesus so that you can walk in him. Unfortunately, many of us, we received him and then now we decide to now look for principles from the Bible. Yeah, it's biblically sound. It is evidence in the text. But if you apply it without the living presence of the Lord Jesus, you will never see the result. What empowers you for result, it is not the scriptural authenticity of your concept. It is not the philosophy that you apply. It is not the religious excellence you demonstrate. It is the presence of God. And many believers rather will go to church religiously and be very dedicated to their ritual, but they don't seek the presence. And so you are armed with information, but you don't have the presence. And if you don't have the presence, then the Bible now becomes a theological book, doctrinally sound, it is a fable about people who have lived years ago that you will never be able to material, ma manifest what is written in the text. Today I've come to ask you, have you received him? Because if you have not received him, then you cannot access the promises that you are ordained for. As you received him, walk ye him. So how do you walk? How do you move in the supernatural? How do you cast out devils? How do you experience a dimension of faith how do you rule in authority in the spirit? How do you come to a place where you work in financial abundance and you are not restrained, limited by your resources and handicapped by limitations and, and challenged and frustrated, anxious by your poverty status? What can you do to come to the place where you experience the supernatural like Jesus Christ? He says, have his presence 
and then walk him. Now, when it says, as ye have received him, walk ye in him. We need to understand, for us to walk in him, we need to understand how we received him. Because if you don't know how you received him and who you received, then you are never going to work. Because you see, how you receive literally communicates two connotations. It's talking about the person you receive and the methodology you received. And so you need to know those two. You must have the person and then you must have the method by which you receive. And if you combine the two and you apply it in your work, you are going to experience an explosive manifestation of the favor of God. You will demonstrate the power of God. You walk in the dimension of the supernatural. It will blow your mind. Why? Because now you are not just talking about Jesus. You are walking step by step, step in step. Uh, here later, there later, you are walking intimately with him because he is with you. And if you begin to do that, I'm telling you, now you are going to flow in the miraculous supernaturally and it will blow your mind how you are going to experience the promises of God with ease. When God called me, I never went to no Bible school. The only thing, the person who called me who is the Holy Spirit, the Lord himself, now began to train me himself. So th this is how I began to learn how to work with her. He'll come to me and then he'll ask me, that is how I read my Bible. He starts with me, show me what is in the text, e e e interpret the text to me. And I ask him questions like I'm talking to somebody standing by me. And he talks to me. And he reveals things to me. He tells me when to wake and when to sleep. He leads me. He directs me. And that is how I devour. He shows me what books to read. So I talk to him as a living person. When I'm doing praying for people in deliverance or whatever, I call him and say, Lord, you are here. And the moment his presence manifests, the demons begin to leave. I don't even have to struggle to shout and scream for hours or minutes for the demon to leave because I walk in into the deliverance session with his presence. I don't preach without him because i am not communicating philosophy doc, doc, doctrinal dogma to impress you or to convince you of the truth i don't preach to convince i preach to present him i, I don't communicate to show how good i am i communicate him as a living person to you as i'm talking to you i am presenting him to the domain where you are and as you receive him and embrace him he will convince you of the truth he will convict you of sin he is going to make you aware that what i'm saying is true and, and that is what god wants us to do to really have a strong desire that god there's nothing else i want in life but your presence that's why Paul says, I count all things as done for the excellency of Christ, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things, that I may win. He wants Christ more than anything in life. What do you want in life? What do you seek? What are you striving for? What is your passion? Because when you have Christ, you have the key to unlock everything that is owned by God. When you have him, you have God, you have everything that belongs to God. He is the one that God the Father has given everything to. And so when you have him, you are joined as with him. That is why he says, seek first the kingdom, that is the present, and his righteousness, that is the status. And all this thing that you are looking for will be given to you. He is the key to the treasure, the vault of the treasures of God. So I've come to let you understand. I present the Lord Jesus. And remember, how you received him is how you are going to work in him. What did you receive and how did you receive? You received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. As Lord and then Savior. Some of you, you see him as your Savior. You want to be delivered from hell. You just wanted a fire insurance to go to heaven. But you never made him your Lord. Lord means that he determines what you do. And you don't do anything until you consult him as a living person with him. You don't take a step until you acknowledge him to direct your path. You don't move until you make him aware that he's your shepherd, your Lord. And so you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. But remember, you received him by believing in your heart and declaring out of your mouth that he's your Lord and your Savior and that he has forgiven your sin. The moment you did that, Jesus came to dwell in your heart. He, he fused himself with you. Your spirit became regenerated. You became one with him. As you are walking with him as being the temple of God. And he dwells in your spirit. He is with you.
Now, if the Lord is with you, now the question is, how do you walk? Now, remember, how you received him, you received him, that is how you walk. So, how did you receive? You believed in your heart, you confessed with your mouth, then you began to walk in him. So, this, the same manner, what you need to know is to believe the promises of God in your heart. You declare it out of your mouth, knowing that you do it with the intimate relationship with his living presence with you, then you begin to take a step of faith. When you do that, miracles will break out all around you. So how do you walk in him? How do you walk in the supernatural? How do you walk in the dimension of breakthroughs and, and walking in dominion and experiencing his bountiful uh, abundance in your life? What do you do? Have the living presence of God, the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit with you. Know the truth of God's word. Search the scriptures and find out the promise of God concerning anything that you really want to experience. Believe it in your heart. Now remember, true belief is not the acceptance of the truth. True belief is embracing the word of God in his presence. Without the presence of God, you are not really a true believer. The Bible says we, having the same spirit of faith, we believe, therefore we speak. So the authentic proof of your belief, it's not what you have quoted from the scripture, but you having the living presence, the Holy Spirit with you, because he's the power of your belief. He's the living faith. He's the, he's the person of faith. Without him, what you believe must sound biblical, but you will not get no result. So we have presence, we have doctrine, the biblical, biblical promise, and then we have you believing in your heart, and then speaking. The moment you do that, the next thing you do is to begin to take a step in the direction of what you spoke, even though you don't see anything. And I'll give you a quick example. When David confronted Goliath, Goliath had been taunting, threatening the army of Israel for 40 days. David shows up and says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? from the promises of God's way he knew as long as he doesn't have a covenant with God, he's an uncircumcised Philistine. And he knew that because he has no covenant with God, God was on his side. So he quoted the scripture. Then he says something that blows, mama. He says to Goliath, Goliath, today I will cut off your head and I'll give your, your body to the bed. Then everyone will know that there is God in Israel. When David said that, he never had a sword. He had only a slink and a stone. Now, how was he going to cut off the head of Goliath with no sword? He did not have what it takes to be able to do what he said. And yesterday, when David said that to Goliath, he began to run towards Goliath. And I'm wondering, how was he going to cut off his head with a stone and a slink? But this is what he did. When he ran towards Goliath, he activated the faith that he spoke. Now remember, David invoked the covenant of God. He invoked the presence of God. He invoked the presence of God and then he spoke what he believed and then he ran towards the problem. Even though he did not have everything put together to succeed. He did not have the sword to manifest the promise he said, but he ran towards Goliath. And when he got to there, he threw the stone and killed Goliath. He literally used the same sword, the sword of Goliath, his own sword, to cut off his head and manifested the prophecy that God has ordained. I know many of you are facing some challenges like Goliath. You are contending against some oppositions and, and limitations and struggles. You are, you are trying to pursue your divine promise has become a, a, a struggle. And you don't know what to do. But I've come like, Goliath, like David to let you understand that if you will believe in your heart and speak in the presence of the Lord, Everything that you need will be aligned. And what you call a challenge will be a stepping stone to your elevation. And God will break you out to the place of success and access the benevolence, the abundance that God has ordained for him. Today, I just came to exalt you and to let you know, as ye therefore received him, walk ye him, walk like him. God wants you to not just walk religiously, piously, but he wants to walk in authority, in power in abundance that you experience every thing that jesus christ experienced as therefore you have received him therefore if you have received the lord jesus christ our lord 
walk ye in him. Today I've come to challenge you to walk in him. Until next time, this is Rain of Monday. Bye-bye.